Good evening, fellow Aleens, and welcome to the program Aleens Uniting, live from LFCS TV. Uh, a program that reveals the truth and exposes the matrix, something that the mainstream media doesn't want you to know, through the perspective of Alenon Synelepsis. Now, Alenon Synelepsis, as we have mentioned, is the legal representation of the Alene Nation, and it is the only legal representation of the Alene Nation. And this is our second program. In our first program, we saw the illegal immigration of millions of refugees coming into our country, supported by numerous non-profit organizations, such as the Nyarkos Foundation and many other foundations that exist worldwide. Of course, at the head of all of these non-profit organizations is the known figure George Soros. Uh, we also see that the United Nations and the European Union is also involved in this devious plot and as well as all governing political parties, and most of them as well, support the refugees. Um, they support them with land, they support them with housing, food, shelter, financial benefits, free, free health aid, while the Aleen citizen in his own country is facing poverty, he's facing high unemployment rates, large suicide rates, they're losing their homes to the banks, and pretty much the Aleen citizen has hit rock bottom in his own country. Uh, we also revealed that the World Bank balance sheet and the heritage funds of various countries. Altogether, there's about 198 countries that has a huge amount of wealth. And we specifically showed the countries where these refugees are coming from and how these countries have trillions of dollars in funds. So there is really no need for any refugee to leave the country since they have this wealth. But of course, it is a strategy um, and a plot for refugees to come into Greece, so the lean citizen loses his identity, and Hellenism is, in general loses its identity. We also focused on the 600 billion that Artemis Oras brought in favour of the sovereign democracy of Elas, um, in contrast with the private corporation called Hellenic Republic, because the sovereign democracy of Elas is the people themselves. Now, in today's program, we will focus on recent events. And this event regards, is in regard to the national elections of 2019. This was on 7th of July, which was a couple of weeks ago. And we'll focus on the fraud and the theft that happens in the entire voting process and in the election process. Um, we see that through this program, we'll see that all political parties are really one. Um, and their main mission is to divide the people. That's why they are called komata, komatiazun. They divide the people. And they're all involved in the fixed results of the elections. Uh, Elion Synelipsis and the political body Elion Synelipsis um, partook in these national elections for the first time, um, both in the European elections and the national elections. The European elections were about two months ago, and the national elections were two weeks ago. Um, therefore, we will look into these elections, and the interesting thing to note, and to raise, and this should raise a lot of questions to the people, is that. Artemis Soros himself was a political candidate in both the European elections and the national elections. Now, in order to be a political candidate in such elections, you have to have a clean criminal record. Therefore, in contrast to this, we see that Artemis Soros is currently held in prison, he's held detained, with no charges against his name. This should raise a lot of questions for everybody out there. Um, we also see rev various evidences revealing the fraud and the theft of the election process, the fixed results, and first, the first video that we'll look at is in regard to how the ballot box originated in Greece and the roots of the, of the ballot box. Let's have a look at the first video. Είστε τώρα ένα καθεστώ το οποίο συνεχώ έχει μια τεράστια δυναμική γιατί από τότε που έχει τι εκλογέ στο νεότερο κράτο, δηλαδή έχει μπει κάλπη, έχουν στήσει την κάλπη από τότε που τελικά δεν είχε κράτο. Ήσουν ήδη υποδουλωμένο. Και όταν λες το 1821 απελευθερώθηκα, μπήκε στην τεχνία στον Όθωνα, δηλαδή στους Χαζάρους, δηλαδή στην Εκκλησία. Και σου φορέσανε καπέλο για αυτή τη διαδικασία και σου φτιάξανε την κάλπη και δεν ψηφίζεις και δεν ψήφισες ποτέ. Και σου έβγαζαν αυτή πάντα ό,τι ήθελα. Και είπα, δεν έχει συσταθεί βουλή σε σώμα ποτέ από, το, από την πρώτη φορά που συστήθηκε σε κράτος το νεότερο κράτος μας. Ψάχτε πίσω μέχρι το 1841. Δεν θα δείτε ποτέ ότι η βουλή έχει συσταθεί σε σώμα. Άρα δεν υπάρχει καμία αληθινή ψηφοφορία. Άρα δεν υπήρχε ποτέ καμία αληθινή κυβέρνηση. Παρακαλώ, ψάχτε όλα τα φεκ μέχρι πίσω. Μπείτε στο εθνικό τυπογραφείο στα φεκ και ψάχτε να δείτε πότε η Βουλή συστήθηκε σε σώμα. Δεν συστήθηκε ποτέ. Μα ποτέ. Τι η Βουλή που έκαναν εκλογές. Θα συσταθεί σε σώμα. 
και ο νόμος είναι ξεκάθαρος. Λέει, έπειτα από 28 μέρες μετά από την εκλογή, θα πρέπει η Βουλή να συσταθεί σε σώμα. So from this video we see that the ballot box was introduced just after 1833 under the rule of the Bavarian and Khazar King Otto. Uh, before this we actually had a transparent voting system and this was introduced by Kapodistrias. Now Kapodistrias was a very known figure during the War of Independence. He actually united the divided uh, municipalities into a true democracy. Now democracy means the power of the municipalities. And This is where the people could actually vote and had the power. Um, and of course this voting of the citizens was transparent and everybody knew who one person voted for. Artemis Soros mentions that we never actually achieved independence of 1821 and we were actually transferred. The larger powers actually saw that this came through. Um, they saw the devious transfer of the, the Greek state that was under Ottoman occupation transferred to the Bavarian elite, the Bavarian banking elite specifically. Now, we unfortunately, our war effort relied heavily upon foreign loans, upon, uh, upon the foreign banking regimes, and that gave them the rise to take full control of us and of our sovereignty. Now, in this period, we also have the introduction of the first political parties, the first Komata, which were the Russian party, the French party, and the English party. Now, there was never any political party for the interests of the Greek citizen, of the Greek himself. Um, now, these foreign interests, we had foreign interests within our own homeland, like the parties we have today. Now, divide and conquer has been their main method, and this has been the main method for many years now. Now, once Kapodistiras, unfortunately, was assassinated, foreign powers took control of Greece through King Otto. King Otto came into power Um, in 1833 and this is the most crucial point in our history because this is the loss of our identity and our sovereignty um, the private corporation kingdom of greece was introduced with the introduction of king otto and the kingdom of greece today is called the hellenic republic we mentioned that the hellenic republic is the same private corporation as the kingdom of greece of 1833 with king otto now let's have a look at the first fec and we'll discuss a few things on this fec because This is the fact that actually turns us from sovereign Alenes into slaves and subordinates. And this is because every Alene had to give an oath of subordinacy to King Otto and in the name of the Holy Trinity. We lost our sovereignty and became subordinates in our own country. Now, this is how this ties in with our program today because after 1833, we have the introduction of the secret ballot. This was introduced after King Otto. And the entire voting process from this point on is fixed, controlled by the elite and the Bavarian families that King Otto brought. Because King Otto, of course, was a 16-year-old kid who came into rule. A 16-year-old kid, of course, cannot rule Greece. He brought a whole lot of families, thousands of Bavarian and Khazarian um, people. And if we trace the origins of the politicians we have today in our government, we will see that many of them have traces to these Bavarian families brought in by King Otto. So let's go to today's, uh, today's election process and let's have a look at the next video which tells us a bit about the, st the statistics um, involved with the election process and the numbers. Let's have a look at this video. Σήμερα δηλώνει ο ελληνικός πληθυσμός ότι είναι αυτοί που ζουν στην Ελλάδα αυτή τη στιγμή με τα στοιχεία του κράτους μας, που δεν έχουμε κράτος, είναι ιδιωτική εταιρεία, αλλά το κράτος μας, ότι ζουν 10.050.000 άνθρωποι. Σωστά. Ζουν 10.050.000 άνθρωποι. Θέλω να μου εξηγήσει κάποιος εχέφρον άνθρωπος πώς γίνεται η εγγεγραμμένη στους εκλογικούς καταλόγους, που σημαίνει είναι πάνω από 18, είναι 9.990. Δεν μπορεί να το εξηγήσει κανένα αυτό, πρόεδρε. Άρα έχουμε μια μεγάλη τρύπα εκεί, κανεί δεν ενδιαφέρεται, κανένα δεν μιλάει. Φυσικά δεν υπάρχει κόμμα να μιλήσει, δεν υπάρχει εισαγγελέα, δεν υπάρχει αέριο πάγο, δεν υπάρχουν συνταγματολόγοι, δεν υπάρχει δικηγόρο, δεν υπάρχει κανένα. Δηλαδή είναι τεράστιο το μάτρεξ που ζούμε. Πώ γίνεται να είμαστε 10.050.000 αυτή τη στιγμή και οι εγγεγραμμένοι στου καταλόγου που βγάζουμε εκλογέ είναι 9.900. Ακούστε να δείτε κύριε. Τα δύο τρίτα του πληθυσμού, τα δύο τρίτα είναι κάτω από 18 χρονών και δεν ψηφίζουν. Άρα λοιπόν τα 2 τρίτα είναι 600... 600... 66. 66. Άρα λοιπόν οι ψηφοφόροι αυτή τη στιγμή, τη στιγμή αν ήμασταν 10.050, έπρεπε να είναι οι εγγεγραμμένοι στους εκλογικούς καταλόγους για να πάνε να ψηφίσουν 
στα 6 εκατομμύρια 600. Σωστά κύριε. Σωστά. Τα 3.300 είναι παιδιά. Είναι κάτω από 18. Εμείς αντί αυτού είμαστε σε μια Ελλάδα που έχουμε 9.990 εγγεγραμμένους για να ψηφίσουν. Άρα λοιπόν έχουμε αυτή τη στιγμή 3.300 παραπάνω ψηφοφόρους από αυτούς που δεν πρέπει να υπάρχουν. Ποιοι είναι αυτοί οι ψηφοφόροι. Άρα λοιπόν έχουμε νεκρούς. Δηλαδή απαγορεύεται να μου δώσουν τον εκλογικό κατάλογο του κάθε τμήματος. Now according to Artemis Oras and of course according to the country's statistics of 10 million, around 10 million people, uh, a third of the population which equals 3.3 million people is under the age of 18 and they of course don't vote and shouldn't be in the electoral uh, register. Therefore two thirds of the population should amount to 6.6 million voters who should vote. However we see that 9.9 .9 million people are written in the electoral register And Atemi Sora says, and it's evident, that 3.3 million people, there is extra voters. Now, these are voters who have passed away, according to Atemi, and this can be also be proven, uh, and the, these votes still actually count. Now, the suspicious, and the suspicious thing is that it is illegal for anyone to see the electoral register, because if someone was to see the electoral register, they would see that people would be born in 1920s, 1930s, 1940s even, that still vote today in these elections. Even recent deceased people would still vote in these elections. So the regime is able to give many fake identification cards to maybe one person, so to one person that exists as part of the system or a paid person can be given 10 different identification cards And with these IDs, he's able to go to 10 different departments and vote under a different name. Because, and this is a fact, this actually happens. Um, so that means that 10 deceased people can actually vote through one living person. Um, and, this, and the preceding judge, the preceding judge is a person who is in each department where we vote. They are in charge of overlooking the entire process. Their role isn't to monitor or check the identification cards. They simply see the name and mark it off. So this is questionable and suspicious in itself. Um, let's also see another document which shows the numbers between the national elections and the European elections which we had before the national elections. And we see that we have a difference of, well first of all we see that in the Euro elections we have 10 million and 88,000 people. Um, in contrast with the national elections, which had 9,961,000 people, so we see a difference of 126,607 people. Where do these numbers come from? That's a big difference. And we see again that in the Euro elections we have pretty much the same, um, same population amount, um, same population amount of Greece, so 10 million people voted, whereas we should have a third of the population under 18 who doesn't vote, and this is, this, the, the numbers simply don't make sense. Um, now let's go through how the election process occurs in Greece, so the viewers can have a better understanding of how it occurs. So we have school centres, and in these centres we have departments that are allocated according to alphabetical order of the surnames of the people that vote. So the, in one centre you could have about 10 departments. Um, inside this, each department you have a preceding judge, as I mentioned before, and this is usually a lawyer that is appointed by the Bar Association. And this um, preceding judge can also bring a friend with him, which is also very suspicious. We'll get into this. Um, we also have a supervising committee, which is drawn by a lot of local citizens. Now the problem with this is that in 90% of the voting departments, this amount, the local citizens don't turn up, so you have... Um, A, a supervising committee that's non-existent and that can't control or inspect the voting procedure. In, in addition to this, we also have the political or the party representatives of each political party. So they send their representatives to various departments to also monitor the voting procedure and make sure there's no injustice in, in the department. And the preceding judge is in charge of giving the final results from each ballot So he collects the results from the ballot box after it's counted to give it to the first instance court and from the first instance court to the Ministry of Interior this is where the votes are counted by a private corporation called Singular Logic and we'll get into what Singular Logic is and the Ministry of Interior then shows the results live on TV. Now, 
let's get into the next video which actually talks about the hidden departments. Let's go to the next video. Ο Γιώργος Παπαντρέου πήγε να ψηφίσει και δεν έβρισκε το εκλογικό τμήμα, σωστά. Τι διάλο σημαίνει αυτό, αντιλαμβάνεστε. Καταρχήν, άμα είχαμε τους εκλογικούς, όπως έχεις πει, αντιπροσώπους, θα βρίσκαμε πάρα πολλά τμήματα που είναι δηλωμένα, αλλά δεν υπάρχουν φυσικά. Έχουμε σε μία πόλη. 20 εκλογικά τμήματα ανακοινώσει. Ότι έχουμε 20 εκλογικά τμήματα. Και εγώ αντί για 20 φτιάξω 19. Εσεί πώ θα ξέρετε, πώ θα τα μετρήσετε, Η δυνατότητά σα να μετρήσετε τα τμήματα δεν υπάρχει. Σα έχω πει ότι είναι 20. Στο ΦΕΚ είναι 20 εκλογικά τμήματα. Και εγώ έχω στήσει 19. Και εκεί μέσα από όλου εσά δεν θα υπάρχει κανένα όνομά σα για να πάτε. Άρα δεν θα πάτε. Αλλά αφού δεν θα πάτε, δεν θα ξέρετε ότι υπάρχει. Που σημαίνει στα 22.600 τμήματα. Και 500 τμήματα και 600 είναι κρυφά. Τι έχουν μέσα αυτά τα τμήματα, ψήφου που ουσιαστικά είναι μόνο σε ένα χώρο. Και ρυθμίζονται οι ψήφοι σε ποιο κόμμα θα πάει και ποιον θέλουν να βγάλουν. Είναι έτσι, δεν είναι. Το, το εκλογικό τμήμα έχει ονόματα μέσα. Το δυστύχημα το μεγάλο είναι ότι ναι, μεν έχει το όνομα στο κατάστημα, στο, στο εκλογικό τμήμα, αλλά ο ψήφο δεν έχει υπογραφεί. Που σημαίνει, σβήνει το όνομα ότι ψήφισε και εκεί μέσα στην κάλπη υπάρχει ένα ψήφο. Δεν ξέρει ποια είναι. Και ο νεκρός έχει έρθει και έχει ψηφίσει, αφού δεν έχει υπογραφεί, εσύ δεν μπορείς αυτό να το, εσύ δεν μπορείς να το αποδείξεις αυτό, γιατί δεν έχεις 22.600 αντιπροσώπους. Οπότε, εάν αύριο το πρωί είχαμε 22.600 αντιπροσώπους με τις εφεδρίες τους, θα βλέπαμε ποια τμήματα είναι τα κρυφά. Δεν ξέρεις αν έχει 2.000 μάτωμα και γαμμένα, τρία, όσα θέλουν βάζουν, ρε παιδί μου, όσα θέλουν, όσα γουστάρουν. Άρα έχουν 500 κρυφά τους τμήματα, που κανονίζουν από εκεί και δίνουν τα ποσοστά στη σύγκυλα. So here Artemis Soros talks about the hidden departments that the regime uses in order to count votes. Um, on screen we see the previous, a previous Prime Minister of Greece, Papandreou, who couldn't find his department, obviously because it was a hidden department. Um, there's also a case in villages around Greece where extra departments were actually added, even though that actual municipality didn't need more departments because it's a small village and we see that there are many departments written in Government Gazette because um, they are obligated to show the amount of departments in the Government Gazette, FEC, which could show maybe 20 departments in a district, however 19 would be actually established where one is used to count votes and allocate votes according to who they want as the winner. Um, so these hidden departments, as Artemis says, can amount to probably about 500 to 600 departments altogether. And these are locations where votes are gathered and allocated to, the, to who they want as the leading party in governance. Um, of course, these votes are all dead people, as we mentioned before. There's millions of votes that are people that, have, that are deceased. And they add these to the inflated results that we see on television. Um, so the, the important thing is that the, the votes are secret and that helps the regime with, his, with its agenda to inflate the results because we can't cross match the votes that are inside the ballot box with names. It's a secret ballot. The system knows what it's doing. Um, of course, once, as we mentioned singular logic and that singular logic is a private corporation that is responsible for counting the, the results from the first instance court and, and then validates it and um, lodges it lodges the results to the Ministry of Interior. Now, let's have a look at this article that talks about the Singular Logic. And we see that uh, Singular Logic, as I said, is a private company and is responsible for the counting the votes. Now, previously, we had a Greek company called MIG that was in control of, many people would know, goodies, that was in control of Everest, for some health hospitals, uh, some, the super fast ferries, and including Singular Logic as well. Now, MIG and all, it, all of these companies later went to the hands of KKR. Now, if we look up KKR, as mentioned in this article, we will see that the owners are the following. We see that the president of KKR is Jerome Kohlberg Jr. And he is a Jew and an active member of Zionist committees. We also see Henry Kravis. He is the CEO of KKR. He is also a Jew. Um, an active member of Zionist committee and in various Zionist lobbies. And he's actually also 
a member of the Council of the Institution, David, uh, David Rockefeller. We also have a third person, George R. Roberts, also a Jew, in various Zionist, Zionist lobbies and over 20 non-profit organisations. Again, we see the problem, if, if you saw the, our previous program, of Jewish interests within our own country that exceed the Greek interests. Because we mentioned in our previous program of the Central Jewish Committee, the Kendriko Islaitiko Simvulio, KISS, which has direct influence on state mechanisms, including our education system. Now let's go to the next video, which, which talks about the, another tactic of the regime, and that is the double department. Let's go to the video. Υπάρχει δύο φορές στο 235, στην ίδια περιοχή. Βάλε και άλλα 300 διπλά σε όλη την Ελλάδα, τα οποία όλα αυτά έχουν έδρα ένα γραφείο, ένα εμπόδιο και μαζεύουν τους ψήφους, τα συγκεντρώνουν, μαζεύονται μόνο υπογραφές και πάνε στα κατάλληλα πρωτοδικεία. Here we see yet another tactic of the regime to exaggerate the results. Now here we have double the results because we have double departments. Um, we see that there is another 300 or more departments that are doubled. If we add this to the hidden departments, which amount to probably about 600 um, departments, we could see over 1,000 hidden and double departments that gather votes and allocate, them, allocate the votes to whoever they want as, as the winner. Now let's go to the next video, which is, the, which is another tactic they use that involves the preceding judge. The preceding judge, as we said, is the person that overlooks, all, um, that overlooks each department allocated by the first instance courts and the bar association. Let's go to the video. Πάμε τώρα στον εκλογικό αντιπρόσωπο. Ο κάθε δικαστικός αντιπρόσωπος έχει δικαίωμα λέει να πάρει μαζί του ένα φίλο του μια φίλη του. Γιατί παίρνει παράδειγμα 150 ευρώ, 200, δεν ξέρω πόσα παίρνει ένα άνθρωπο και βάζει έναν άνθρωπο του δίνει 30 ευρώ και τον επρέγει για βοηθό. Έτσι δεν είναι. Έτσι. Ε? Έτσι είναι και τα ποσά είναι και μεγαλύτερα. Έτσι είναι και μικρά νούμερα. Μπα. Άρα λοιπόν παίρνει δύο άτομα δικά του για να ελέγχει το χώρο. Ξέρει εκ των προτέρων ότι από τα 500 άτομα που είναι στο κατάστημά του τα 600 πόσα είναι, τα 300 είναι νεκρά. Άρα αυτό είναι ψήφι. Αυτή είναι ψήφι εκ του ασφαλούς. Οι πιο, οι πιο καλοί ψήφι είναι. Δεν θα μιλήσουν ποτέ και δεν θα κάνουν ποτέ ένσταση. Το τέλος αφήνει και ένα νουμεράκι και την ώρα που κοιμάται ο εκλογικός αντιπρόσωπος γιατί τα άλλα τα, τα, άλλα, τα κόμματα δεν έχουν εκλογικούς αντιπρόσωπους, είναι όλα μαζί γιατί είναι όλα του καθιστώτος και θα το εξηγήσουμε και πιο κάτω μετά πως θα το αποδείξουμε οπότε το μεσημέρι που λείπει καρφώνει 100 ψήφους τίποτα δεν είναι παίρνει 100 ψήφους, λέτε, τα βάλει μέσα μπα, μπα, και τα χώνει στην κάλπη δεν είμαστε εντάξει, στο τέλος δεν θα μετρήσεις και θα πάει ο δικός μου εκλογικός αντιπρόσωπος τώρα να μετρήσει και θα δει ότι στους 500 ψηφίσαν οι 350 και τα 100 μέσα είναι δικά της ποιος θα τους κόψει ποιος θα του μιλήσει αφού δεν είναι κανείς εκεί το μεσημέρι Πάω για κατούριμα λέει. Φτάνει ο χρόνος για κατούριμα να πας λέει. Μα σου βάλει 100 ψήφους μας, 150, 120, 80. Και δεν θα βάλει σε όλους δικούς του, θα βάλει εκεί που γουστάρει αυτό. Και εκεί που θα βάλει θα σε κλέψει. Και δεν ξέρεις που θα βάλει. Now to help us with this specific topic regarding the preceding judge, we're actually going to go to an eyewitness account of a political representative of Elinon Synelepsis. Um, who was uh, present in the municipality of Ceres. Ceres is a city north of Thessaloniki, and her name is Calliope um, Altindasioti. Let's go to her video. Regarding my experience as a political representative of the political body Elinus in Elefsis, I realized that in the national elections of Greece on July 7, 2019, a lot of irregularities occurred. In the voting center where I was a political representative, as well as in every voting center, there is a presenting judge appointed by the state who regulates the voting procedure. This presenting judge uses an assistant and most of the time this assistant is a relative of his or a friend. I consider that this is one of the first mistakes of the state because this way nobody can guarantee the validity of the voting procedure. In addition, I noticed, together with other political representatives of the political body Elinon Synelepsis, that in some voting centers, the number of the voters at a given time was extremely high compared to other voting centers. That actually happened in a voting center 
that I was responsible to observe during the Greek national elections. In this specific center, there were 100 to 120 more voters at around noon time, compared to the other centers where there were at least 100 voters less at around the same time. Statistically speaking, this is suspicious and made me believe that the presiding judge, together with his assistant, could possibly put 100 ballot papers inside the ballot box before the end of the voting process, which was at 7 p.m., and of course secretly, when no one was watching. However, when I and some fellow political representatives began inspecting this voting center, the presiding judge and his assistant told us that they finally made a mistake regarding the counting of the people who voted. I even noticed in the above-mentioned voting center, where I was a political representative, that there was another political representative from another political party, and this specific representative did not wear a name tag, and she was also helping the presiding judge in the voting procedure. This is very legal, since political representatives are only appointed by the respective political parties and bodies, and their job is to observe and make sure that their respective political party or body is not treated unfairly by the entire voting process. Also, when I, when I asked this specific representative which political party she represents, she refused to respond and she continued helping the presiding judge. Therefore, after all of this, and everything I and my fellow political representatives of Elinon Sinelis witnessed, I realized that during the elections, nobody defends the will of the Greek people. This is something very disrespectful, not only to the Greek people, but also to democracy. So according to Calliope, the political representative in Ceres of Elinon Sinelis, we see that the voting numbers are predetermined. And these predetermined numbers are probably the amount of uh, deceased uh, votes. And all that is left is for the preceding judge, along with the friend they bring along into the department, to place 100 or as many votes as they want, as they have predetermined, into the ballot box. Of course, when someone isn't looking. Now, if Calliope obviously wasn't there, they would have done this. But we can, we can say that um, Calliope's presence caused a bit of confusion in the department and they couldn't actually put these votes in the ballot box, forcing them to say that we actually had extra numbers, an extra hundred numbers or so that they shouldn't have. Um, we also see that various people of other political parties, other political representatives, like the Communist Party or whoever they sent, could also be on the, in the act. Of course not all of them, but the ones that are, are put in certain departments by the regime to also see that this uh, fraud of votes happens with the preceding judge. Um, obviously the regime knows how to steal votes from the people. It's practiced this for many years now and it's also obviously been trained for many years to do this and to steal votes from the people and exaggerate the results that we see on our television screens from the Ministry of Interior. Let's go to another video now, another tactic of the regime where the um, results can be tampered with before they reach the first instance court. Let's go to that video. The Galpi, next to the Protodicio, the Agrafa Yonode. Just to elenge afto, the Dicastigia di Prosopos Dipon, Mori na liosi to Hartitis, na lax ta potelesmona, ke na stelio to Harti Feli, ke oti dipote apotelesma Feli, mesa, sto Protodicio. Sosta? Nesta. Oya, sinvegni. Συμβαίνει σε όσα γουστάρουν αυτοί με τους δικούς ανθρώπους. Δεν συμβαίνει σε όλα, συμβαίνει. Σε κλέβει και από εκεί. Άρα καλώς ψήφισε, καλώς υπόγραψε ο δικαστικός αντιπρόσωπος. Πολύ ωραία. Έλα να βρεις άκρη. Έλα να αποδείξεις εσύ ότι σε έκλεψα. Ενώ θα φύγει μέσα και θα πάει. Ότι δεν είναι ψηφίσανε 250, ψηφίσανε 375 και θα βάλει τους σταυρούς όπως θέλει αυτοί. Άρα δίνει το χαρτί τους μέσα. So here we see that the preceding judge can also tamper with the results. And let's also see this article here, which actually, this is an occurrence that happened where envelopes, the results of the ballot box, 
goes into an envelope which has to be specifically sealed. Now, in this article, in certain districts, these envelopes didn't have this specific seal, so this allows the proceeding judge to tamper with the results before it goes to the first instance court. And this happens, could happen often. As Artemi says, it might not happen often, but it does happen, and further results are exaggerated. Um, that's why we have such a big number at the end through the Ministry of Interior. Um, now, we're going to go to another video that regards the political parties and we're going to analyse the political party involvement in all this fraud process of the national elections and any elections that Greece has. Let's go to the next video. Δεν έχει να κάνει μόνο να ελέγξουμε τα δικά μας ποσοστά που μας κλέβουν. Έχει να κάνει και με ένα μεγάλο κομμάτι που αυτοί κρέμονται σε μια κλωστή. Και δεν είναι κόμματα, δεν υπάρχουν κόμματα και ιδεολογίες. Είναι οι ίδιοι άνθρωποι που αλλάζουν ρούχα. Είναι το ίδιο. Είναι το ίδιο το αυτό που αλλάζει η ρούχα και πάει από το ένα κόμμα στο άλλο. Το στόχο της ουσίας αυγής που είναι. Πουθενά δεν είναι ρε παιδιά. Δεν ψηφίσαν οι Χρυσή Αυγήτες. Μα και η Χρυσή Αυγή με το ίδιο σύστημα είχε βγει. Μα και ο Λεβέντης που είχε 5% κοινά νύπαρτος με το ίδιο σύστημα είχε βγει. Του δώσανε ψήφους από τα δικό τους τα τμήματα. Συν την αποχή τη μεγάλη. Είδες ένα βλαμμένο με 5% να σου λέει και δεν έχει ούτε 5 ψήφους. Τι να σου πει, γιατί ψηφίστηκε, γιατί. Για το στάτους του πολιτικό, για το παρουσιαστικό του, για αυτά που έλεγε που δεν έλεγε τίποτα. Για σκεφτείτε το. Γι' αυτό και βλέπετε και ξεφουσκώνουν όλα αυτά. Και τελείως. Το ποτάμι πώς μπήκε. Είχε 5% το ποτάμι. Ή τελικά είχε 5% ο Μπαρουφάκης. Γιατί έκανε τη μεγάλη εξτρατεία και είπε πολύ σοβαρά πράγματα και τον αγάπησε ο λαός και τον ψήφισε. Που τον ψήφισε αυτό ότι όχι είχε και ένα τραβεστή 60 χρονών. Που έλεγε ο Μέγας Αλέξανδρος είναι μπουρδέλο. Ε, το πού να ψηφιστεί ρε παλικάρια. Δεν χρειάζεται να το ψηφίσει κανείς. Το σύστημα αυτό ψηφίζει και βγάζει αυτούς που θέλει. Ότι όλο αυτό το καθεστώς έχει παντού τα πλοκτάμια του και σε κλέβει συνεχώς. Ήδη είδαμε στην Τολεμαϊδα, δεν, δεν ξέρω, θυμάμαι πού. Στην Τολεμαϊδα, σωστά. Στην Τολεμαϊδα, ρε. Δικαστικό, ε, 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 εκλογικό αντιπρόσωπο να ψηφ, του κοινάλ να βάζει σταυρού στη Νέα Δημοκρατία. Το, το, το οξύμορο το αντιλαμβάνεστε. Έτσι ακριβώς αρχηγέ και πόσε, σε πόσα άλλα μέρη, σε πόσα άλλα εκλογικά τμήματα έγινε yeah, ακριβώς yeah. το ίδιο είτε με το κοινάλ είτε με του ΚΚ είτε με οποιοδήποτε άλλου που βάζανε και σταυρώνανε τη Νέα Δημοκρατία γιατί αυτή ήταν η εντολή σε αυτές τις εκλογές να γίνει αυτό Σωστά, βλέπετε τώρα επειδή πιάστηκε ένα άλλα 10.000 περιστατικά και 20.000 περιστατικά δεν πιάστηκαν Δηλαδή να καταλάβετε η Κωνσταντοπούλου έχει κάνει ποιο κόμμα έχει κάνει η Αλέξανδρε Την ε, πλεύση ελευθερίας Ωραία η, η οποία πήρε 1,9% 1,9% 1,4% 1,4% Πήρε 1,4% Δεν έχει καμία εμφάνιση πουθενά Δεν έχει πει τίποτα Βγήκε και λέει όλοι είμαστε γκέι και όλοι μαζί θα πάμε και όλα καλά Δεν είπε τίποτα, δεν έχει οργάνωση, δεν έχει τίποτα η κοπέλα Λοιπόν, και πήρε ένα κόμμα τέσσερα. Η Ελλήνω συνέλευση που έχει 400 γραφεία που σημαίνει όσα έχουν όλα τα κόμματα μαζί, εμείς έχουμε παραπάνω τουλάχιστον 100. Δηλαδή όσα έχει ο ΣΥΡΙΖΑ. Ο ΣΥΡΙΖΑ έχει γύρω στα 56. Η Νέα Δημοκρατία, κάτι του Γιγόρη και κάτι αυτή, εκτός από τα κεντρικά της, δεν έχουν τίποτα. Εσύ που είσαι παντού, είσαι ο μόνος που έχεις κάνει στατικές δράσεις, είσαι ο μόνος που κάνεις δράση και κινείσαι παντού, είσαι ο μόνος που έχεις κάνει τόσο τεράστια οργάνωση και πραγματικά αγώνα. Αυτοί δεν έχουν κάνει τίποτα, σαφώς έχουν άλλα αυτοί και βλέπεις ότι εσύ παίρνεις 0,5 ή 0,25 Αυτό είναι για να σου δώσουν μία φάπα να, σπάσουν τα, να σπάσει το ηθικό σου Δηλαδή, α, ξανακατεβαίνετε ε, Δηλαδή πάτε και σε εθνικές εκλογές Μπράβο, πάρε να 0,25 Εσύ δεν έχεις τη δυνατότητα τώρα εφόσον δεν έχεις το μηχανισμό του προηγούμενο που σου είπα να τον ελέγξεις Ό,τι σου πούνε ανέφαλες γιατί πρέπει να έχουμε στοιχεία για να κάνουμε ένσταση και για να τσακίσουμε όλο αυτό το μηχανισμό. So from this video, one can conclude that all political parties are actually one and they all conspire in choosing which party uh, they want in government and they want as a winner or which parties they want in the parliament. Uh, we see that Golden Dawn is now non-existent in parliament and it's quite questionable as to where all their voters went. Now, one could assume that they entered the parliament um, in the last elections, maybe they entered the parliament through the same procedure. That, that's quite evident that 
their numbers were initially inflated because the system and the regime chooses, chooses who they want in the parliament. And all of a sudden we see that Golden Dawn has lost its members and has pretty much no numbers. Um, there is no way that Golden Dawn, would have, uh, Golden Dawn members would have voted for any other parties, really. They wouldn't have voted for the Communist Party. They wouldn't have voted for the, um, new, new Democracy. So it's questionable as to where the votes went or if there were any votes in the first place. We also see some other pretty much non-existent political um, leaders, such as Levendis with 1.24% as opposed to 5%. Uh, we also see Const Constantino, uh, Constantopoulou with 1.4% with her party, and these are people that are pretty much non-existent in, um, in the political scene and who have had no actions on the streets or have had no political campaign to account for the amounts they received. We also see that uh, the Potami in previous elections got a 5%, which the Potami as well was a non-existent back then. So we see that the regime is directly involved in the counting the numbers and fixing them, the numbers, so it goes to the political parties that they want. Um, now if we compare the actions and the political campaigns of these people to Elion Sinelevsis, we see that Elion Sinelevsis with over 430 officers and with over 400 parliamentarians all around Greece campaigning for Elion Sinelevsis, we see that they give us a result of 0.2%, which is quite uh, which is probably can exist according to the actions and the campaigns we did compared to the other political parties. So there's definitely been a um, robbery of our results and we will actually see this in uh, further along in the program where we actually show uh, evidence from the first instance courts and the Ministry of Interior and we compare these results on how they stole um, votes from Elion Sinelevsis. Now, the, another important issue to mention is the abstention. The abstention in these elections was definitely over 60%, um, even though the media shows that, that it is 40%. Now, the, med the media and the political regime will never show over 50% abstention because that is when the government has actually, um, the government would then be abolished over 50%. But the results actually show a 60%. Um, abstention rate. Now, of course, this is also obviously because of the summer period where many people didn't vote. Um, uh, the abstention unfortunately goes in favour of the regime because you have less people voting and you have pretty much the 40% of the population that votes for the regime and people that are in the regime, whereas the 60% who are people who have fed up with the system and they just don't want any any action in the voting process of their country. We also see another political figure, Varoufakis, and with his political party, Mera Ikushipende, Mera 25. And uh, it's important to mention that uh, we showed Varoufakis the balance sheet, a balance sheet of um, the country, which shows the 600 billion in these accounts. Now, and he actually said that it was a fraudulent document, publicly. Um, even though it's got a number, even though it's got a seal that it is fake, that it is a legit government gazette. Um, Varoufakis, of course, was in Syriza. He was the economics minister during Syriza's time. And we see that all political um, politicians are pretty much reci are recycled people that go around from political party to the other. We see that Syriza actually consists of people from New Democracy. It consists of people from Pashok. Um, and we see that people just change their positions according to what the system wants. Um, we also see that Artemis Soros refers to a transvestite within Varoufakis' political party that defames and insults Alexander the Great. And she actually did this quite um, negatively against Alexander the Great. And it shows the status of the political parties and what sort of people um, are actually governing our country. Um, let's go to actually a document where we will also show how the political parties help each other and are, real, are all in on the act. Now this is, let's put that, this um, article up. It's actually a political party called Movement of Change, which is the PASOK that's in, that's in Parliament today. 
Um, a political representative of that party was caught putting crosses, putting votes towards new democracy. Now this proves again that the political parties are all one and it's ob obviously a strategy put in place by the regime in order for now a new democracy to win. Now this is just one case of a political representative court. Of course there would be hundreds of other cases where the same thing occurs where political representatives of other political parties put votes towards new democracy and whoever they wanted as a winner. So all of them, all political parties are in on the fraud. Uh, we also see actually the existence of a new political figure, Velopoulos, and his new political party called Greek Solution. And now that we're talking about political status, let's have a bit of a look at, at um, Velopoulos now. Now if we, if we haven't seen enough fools already in Greek Parliament, we, this guy has got to take the cherry on the cake because um, this person has a TV channel selling books and certain ridiculous products. And on top of all these ridiculous products, he actually claims that he's the only person on the planet that has epistles, written epistles, handwritten epistles of Jesus Christ. Now this is quite ridiculous in itself and a person from the ministry has actually sued him for saying these lies. These are the sort of people we actually have in our government. Um, now we're going to go to another example where the political parties are involved in the act and we're actually going to go to a video regarding the communist party of our country of Greece um, and their involvement in the national elections and as well as their involvement in the voting processes process throughout the years. Let's go to that video. Πάνω σε αυτό που λες αρχηγείο, πάντως είδαμε και το παγιωμένο 5% του ΚΚΕ που σε αυτές τις εκλογές εμφανίστηκε με άλλους τρεις ή τέσσερους κομματικούς μηχανισμούς και το 5% ήταν σταθερό. Δεν έσπασε και δεν διαλύθηκε τίποτα. Λες και τα κομμουνιστές που ψάχνουν να βρουν μια άλλη ταυτότητα για να εμφανιστούν. Πολύ σωστά, γιατί δεν ήταν μόνο το ΚΚ που κατέβηκε σε αυτές τις εκλογές, ήταν και οι τορκτσιστές, ήταν και το μαρξιστικό λενιστικό, ήταν πέντε διαφορετικά κόμματα α, του ΚΚ όλα, τα οποία δεν πήρανε από το Κομμουνιστικό Κόμμα ούτε μία ψήφο. Μα το Κομμουνιστικό Κόμμα το 5% αυτό που βλέπετε είναι δικό του. Και δεν θα αλλάξει και δεν έχει αλλάξει. Κινείται ανάμεσα 3,5, 5, 6, εκεί κινείται συνεχώς. Με τα παρακλάδια τα δικά του. Αυτή είναι η δυναμική του. Και είναι αληθινή. Των άλλων νόμων είναι ψεύτικη. Να Στα θυμηθούμε και το ΣΥΡΙΖΑ κόμμα. που ήταν στο ΚΚΚ. Ναι, δικό του παρακλάδι είναι. Στο ΚΚΚ βέβαια. Πάντω έχει σημειωθεί στι μέρε μα από ανθρώπου του Κομμουνιστικού Κόμματο. Από όταν πρωτοείπε ότι το 5% είναι παγιωμένο και ήδη τώρα κάθεται στι συνειδήσει των ανθρώπων. Αναρωτιούνται ακόμα και ήδη πώ ακριβώ είναι αυτό το 5% παγιωμένο. Mm. Δηλαδή έχει περάσει και εσωτερικά στο μηχανισμό. Γιατί ναι, μεν κομμουνιστή, αλλά είναι και άνθρωπο. Κάπου έχει και νόηση. Η <laughs> εχή, εδώ είναι το θέμα. Έτσι. Το ΚΚ από όταν γεννήθηκε, άμα το θέλετε, στην Ελλάδα, με Εβραίο τον Πενάρογια, η συμφωνία και με, το, και με τη Ρωσία, αλλά και με τι ΗΠΑ, Ανατολή και Δύση, ήταν ότι εδώ θα πάει ποτέ πάνω από 7% και ποτέ κάτω από 3%. Δηλαδή η συμφωνία ήταν ότι το ΚΚ θα είναι πάντα μέσα στη Βουλή. Αυτή ήταν η συμφωνία. Είναι έγγραφη αυτή η συμφωνία. Now, according to this video, we actually see some mind-blowing information that Artemis Horas has revealed regarding the Communist Party of Greece, KUKUE, um, and in regards to its establishment in Greece and the agreements for it to operate within Greece and its general agreement. Uh, in these nat national elections of 2019, uh, we see that the Communist Party actually breaks breaks up into five different divisions. And as mentioned, we see that it breaks up into the Trotskyists, the Marxist Lenin Party, and some other parties. Now, even though it was divided, we still see the exact same percentages for the Communist Party Kukue, which is always around the 3 to 5 percent mark. And now, as Artemis Horas mentions, this is because this has actually been predetermined by a, an agreement on the Communist Party, um, an agreement between uh, Russia and America on how the Communist Party is to operate and how it is to operate in Greece so that it, it, it is always inside Parliament with a 3 to 5 percent um, result. Again we see like the, uh, the 
establish, the establishment of the Communist Party was established by uh, Abraham Ben Arroya of Jewish origin, again Jewish interests in our, in our country and the influence of Jews and, the, and the inst their institutions in Greece. Let's also go to some photos as well. we'll see, let's see some photos regarding uh, Liana Canelli and Dora Bakoyani. So we're talking about two totally different um, political parties in ideologies. On the left we see Liana Canelli, the, a member of the Communist Party. And on the right we see Dora Bakoyani. Dora Bakoyani is Kiriakos Mitsotakis' sister, who is part of New Democracy. And they seem to be one happy family within the parliament. This was after the oath they took after the 2019 elections. So, in essence, we actually see a recycling of politicians from one party to the other. Um, we see that New Democracy voted, uh, puts a PASOK, a PASOK member, his name is Michalis Hishochoidis, as the Minister of Citizen Protection. And this, this person was actually criticised by Mitsotakis last year for the fires at Mati, which killed a lot of Greek citizens. Um, we see that he reinstates him as the Minister of Political and Citizen Protection. Um, of course, as mentioned before, Syriza contains members of New Democracy and PASOK. And let's not, not also forget the scandals that these political parties are involved in, because we see that Dora Bakoyani, which we saw in the photos, her daughter was involved in um, a scandal within the Red Cross, where she was earning over 320,000 euros per year in a non-for-profit organisation, the Red Cross. Um, of course, if we see Li as well Liana Canelli, if we are to see her home, it's a huge mansion, and we see the great as a, we see her great um, we see that she's a great role model of communism um, with this mansion, of course. Um, as we also also Dora Bakoyani also had her own political party um, some years ago against New Democracy, and now we see her part of New Democracy once again with her brother Kiriakos Mitsotakis in governance. Um, let's go now to this is probably a next section which involves some results and very important results of Elinon Sinelefsis in the district of Ceres. Now the district of Ceres is where Calliope was the political representative. And the political representatives and the political candidates of Ceres went to the first instance court to ask for their results as, a, as opposed to what the Ministry of Interior showed on the TV, on the, on the channels and what they promoted as our results. Let's have a look at um, these results. Now this is there's three different results up here. It shows the fake results of the Ministry of Interior compared to the results of the Ministry uh, of the First Instance Court. And I'm going to go through the names of um, Elion Sinelefsis parliamentarian candidates and the, the varying results between these documents. So first we have Leonidas Almasidis. The Ministry of Interior, in other words singular logic, or singular logic counts as the votes, but before giving it to Ministry of Interior. We see that he has 23 votes to his name, as opposed to the first instance court, which shows that he has 58 votes to his name, which is a difference of 35 votes. The next parliamentarian is Elias Georgiadis, 26 as opposed to 133 votes, with a difference of 107 missing votes. Then we see Alexandros Zagelidis, with 25 votes as compa compared to 97 votes of the first instance court, with a difference of 72 missing votes. Then we see Anatoly Kotsaridou, 16 votes as opposed to 44 votes of the first instance court, a difference of 28 votes missing that are, that are missing. Sultana Naum, 6 votes as opposed to 30 votes of the first instance court, that's a difference of 24 votes. And we see also Didzio Stergios with 33 votes from the Ministry of Interior that was promoted to um, 137 votes of the first instance court, that's a diff difference of 104 votes. So the total sum of missing votes for this district of Ceres amounts to 370 missing votes. If we add up the amount that the Ministry of Interior reported, altogether it equals 129, and the true results should have been 499 altogether. Now, if we are to average the votes of the, um, the missing votes of each candidate, 
we would see an average of 61 votes per candidate if we are the average between these six parliamentarians. Now, if we are to times 61 votes with the, all the parliamentarians around Greece of Eleonis and Ellipsis, that's 61 times 400 parliamentarian candid candidates of Eleonis and Ellipsis, and that equals 24,000 missing votes, and it's probably even more than that. So who is going to account for these missing votes? Of course, once these, uh, once these results were um, received by the candidates in Ceres, that then a lot of objections were made all over Greece with candidates of Alliance and Ellipsis in many areas of Greece. They asked for the same results from the first instance court and were denied the results. A lot of questions being raised there as well. Now one could also say or assume that this also lowers the morale of the people within Alliance and Ellipsis and we see that if Zidios Terios was to see or any other member was to see the very low votes from the Ministry of Interior, they would say that their own people didn't even vote for them, whereas they actually received more, um, with a difference of 60 votes, um, more than what the, first the Ministry of Interior showed. Now, this is probably the most hands-on that we can show. Um, we're going to go to some other stats involving these national elections, and these stats include um, that people, our political representatives in the departments, were still counting votes while the channels had already declared the winner. Um, this happened at 7 p.m. because 7 p.m. is when the ballots close. Just after 7 p.m., the results are already in, and at 7:30 p.m., the governance is already announced. Now this is, this can't happen because in order to count the crosses alone for each parliamentarian, this takes in its own 20 to 30 days to count. Um, that's just the crosses and therefore we can conclude that Elinus, the results of Elinus and Ellipsis should be much higher than 0.2%. Now we're going to get to another point in our program where we're going to show the solution to this problem and how the citizen himself will be able to monitor and check the next national elections. Um, let's go to the next video, which is the solution Elinos and Ellipsis provides. I have told you that the mechanism is not going to be able to do it. That the politicians have to elect the elections. To elect the elections, we need to be as elected as the elections are as elected. Εκπαιδευμένου, τα μάτια του να κοιτάνε και να μην φύγουν ούτε μία ώρα από το εκλογικό τμήμα. Να ελέγξουμε τι εκλογέ μα. Χρειαζόμαστε 22.000 άτομα εκλογικού αντιπροσώπου. 250 ανθρώπου, τουλάχιστον, που θα μπουν στα πρωτοδικεία να πάρουν τα έγγραφα των δικαστικών αντιπροσώπων και 300 άτομα σε βάση δεδομένων. Να είμαστε σε μια βάση δεδομένων όλων υπολογιστών για να περνάμε από το σύστημά μα όλα τα αποτελέσματα και να τα συγκρίνουμε, να κάνουμε αντιπαραθέσει. Και φυσικά να δώσουμε και 50 χιλιάρια να φέρουμε και έναν τον ποτηρίτη. Άρα λοιπόν εκεί χρειαζόμαστε άλλη μια ομάδα όπω έχω πει για να ελέγξουμε όλη αυτή τη διαδικασία. Και στο τέλο, όλη η βάση δεδομένων ελέγχει του ψήφου. Εκεί θέλω τον ποτηρίτη. Θέλω τον ποτηρίτη για να έχει βάση η διαδικασία τη ένσταση που θα κάνω για να την κάνει και στον ΟΗΕ. Έχουν μόνο ένα μονόδρομο. Να οργανώσουν την ίδια την Ελλάδα, την Ελλήνο Συνέλευση και τον ανθρωποκεντρικό μηχανισμό τη Ελλήνο Συνέλευση όπου ο πόλεμο. Θα πάει πιο παγκόσμιο. Τώρα είμαστε εδώ. Αλλά πρέπει να εκτελέσει το εδώ. Το θέμα είναι να καταλάβετε ότι τελειώνουν τα κόμματα. Δεν έχουν κάτι άλλο να κάνουν. Και εκεί πρέπει να είμαστε πιο δυνατοί για να εισπράξουμε και τον κόσμο. Και φυσικά πρέπει να αλλάξουμε και τη συνείδηση του κόσμου. Εμεί. So this video shows us the solution to the problem that the, of the regime counting and um, exaggerating the results of the national of national elections, not just the 2019, but all elections from the time the ballot box was was originated in 1833 and onwards. Um, breaking down this uh, solution in regards to monitoring the next national elections, the political representatives must equal the number of departments that exist. So, if this is 20,000 departments, we have to have representatives that equal that amount. Now. Uh, these people, the political representatives, 
are the basis and the foundation for all of the monitoring process that, process that will happen thereafter. Um, their job is to remain in the department at all times and strictly oversee everything that happens in the department to make sure that the preceding judge who is allocated, as I say once again, by the regime and by the Bar Association, to make sure no extra votes are placed in the ballot box secretly. Um, and of course to monitor other things such as name tags, as Galliopi mentioned previously, regarding other political representatives and that to make sure they're not breaching their duties. Um, their job in the end is to verify the results once the votes are counted within each department and send these results off to a little synalysis and these results must match the, the results that are received by the first instance courts by the preceding judge. Um, let's go now to the people that we must have at the first instance courts. These amount to maybe around 250 people depending on the amount of first instance courts. As I said, these results at the first instance courts must match the results that the political representatives counted at the end of the voting process in the departments. Um, that's how you will catch out the preceding judge to make sure that they didn't tamper with the results from the department to the first instance court. Um, the first instance courts will also catch out the hidden departments and this, this is because they will receive the extra 500 or up to 1,000 Depart um, they will receive 1,000 extra results, which are the departments themselves. But in order to catch this out, you have to have your basis, which is your political representatives in all of the departments. So that way you know how many departments there are and how many hidden departments there are extra. Um, now we go to what Artemis Suarez mentions as the 300 databases. Um, these are located within Elinus and Ellipsis itself and the headquarters of Elinus and Ellipsis and their job is to cross-reference the results with singular logic for any irregularities. Now if there are any irregularities in the numbers, this is where the UN observer plays his role, as Artemis Horas mentions, and any objections will be taken to the United Nations as long as there is solid ground and evidence to back up this, this to back up uh, the objection and this is why you need of course the uh, the poli political representatives in every department as well as your first instance court um, people and this will expose the whole election system um, of course we can't object within Greece because there is no mechanism of the state that rightfully and justfully performs its duty because all the mechanisms of Greece are part of this same system uh, is part of the same system that auto brain from back then. Um, and through Elinor Synalysis we see that only Elinor Synalysis gives the active role of the citizen to monitor, hi to monitor his own election process. And this is the rightful duty in the end of the Elin citizen and he has to play an active role in the voting process as well as his commun the, whatever the community is needed of him. This is what an active citizen's duty is. Um, we see that Elinor Synalysis is now active with 400 um, parliamentarian candidates all over Greece informing people right up until the next elections. Now the important thing of this program of Elinor Uniting is to create awareness for the people abroad because this program of course is in English and the mindset of people abroad is what has to change because many people abroad think that the Elins themselves, the Greeks, are, in, are responsible for the political parties that come about as a result of their voting and the election process. Whereas through this, um, through this program we saw that the evidence shows otherwise and that the results are tampered with, the results are also exaggerated and we see great amounts and votes that are actually counted by people that are deceased. And the, poli the whole political spectrum is involved in this, all political parties are involved in this cover-up and even the state mechanisms are involved in this cover-up. Um, Artemis Sora says that this will probably happen within a year's time because this current government won't last. Of course, the government will put in all these measures that it has put in for so many times, including um, uh, seven-day working week, including um, lower, uh, higher taxes for the people, uh, lower income, constantly taking their homes, squalor, people living in poverty, high unemployment rates, 
This is all the, the only thing the government has done through so many, for so many years. And this will lead to great sporadic actions by the government in order to destroy Greece once and for all, which is what they want and what is what their ultimate goal is. Um, here, Atem Soros in the video refers to that these two elections, both the Euro elections and the national elections, were never ours. Um, that's why they happened so close together as well. And that the next elections must and will be ours. And in order for this to happen, there is this global call with many programs that we're doing throughout within the Linux and Ellipsis and this program as well in English for people abroad to research the facts of Elimus and Ellipsis, see the purpose and uh, the purpose of this battle and, and the purpose of this battle is to unite Elimus all around the world, exposing the matrix and offering the solution out of it. And the solution of course is through the many economic tools that Artemis has brought, he's revealed the matrix involving the heritage funds, involving the election process as we are mentioning today. Um, it's based on the true awakening of the human being because the human being has unfortunately lost his way and is living within this matrix where not only the voting procedure of Greece is fixed but the voting procedure of all around the world is also fixed and people can see this, people can feel the injustice, they see, the, they see that it's the same political parties everywhere around the world. We have to take a role, we have to take an active role and the Linux analysis gives the opportunity and it's the legal representation of the nation, of the citizen himself, to monitor his national elections in the next elections. Therefore, become, an act, become active in the unification of the Alenes all over the planet. Take an active stance and research, research what Illinois and Ellipsis is all about. And we actually have our email down in the bottom of the screen. Contact us, become involved, ask any questions you want. Um, research the facts yourselves and don't take everything we say for, uh, just for the hell of it. Research the facts um, and become active in this, in this unification of Aleens all around the planet. Thank you for watching the program, Aleens Uniting. And then I'm forced to everybody who will do more programs with m involving more things of Aleens analysis and uncovering the matrix. Then I'm forced to everybody and thank you for watching.